Hey, my name is Fatty Galli, and I'm one of the video editors here on the Evolve Originals team. I want to welcome you guys to the first OGA Originals Academy episode of 2023. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about transitions. And before we get into it, I just want to say, no, we will not be talking about the star wipe transition because no one should really be using it unless you're creating an 80s, 90s sitcom trailer for some reason. <laughs> Jokes aside, obviously, as everyone knows, we have rules and guidelines in place when it comes to editing trailers, movies, TV shows, YouTube videos, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, if you have reasoning and intention behind your editing choices, then honestly, all these rules are really meant to be broken. All right, that's what I like to hear, man. At the end of the day, what really matters is, once again, your intention, your reasoning, and the experience for the end viewer. There's this conception out there that editors really just take footage, put into a timeline, slap in some music, and hit export. But really, that's the furthest thing from the truth at least for an effective video edit. Everything that is done from the sound effects, the visual effects, the, the clips that we chose, the music choices, everything is methodically chosen so that the viewing experience is as seamless and enjoyable as possible. Anything that takes the viewer out of that experience is really a hindrance to your edit. That's bad, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about my three favorite transitions and as a disclaimer, this doesn't mean that you should always use transitions. Sometimes the video flows really well with just a simple cut. The first transition, which can really be split into two, and the ones that I use most often are called the L cut and the J cut. An L cut is when the audio from the first clip or scene continues playing over top the next clip or scene. As if. Oh well, my mistake. Now, your job is to go to each of the patient's rooms and spend some time with them. Got that? Yep. Now, a J cut is when the video continues playing, but you hear the audio from the next clipper scene before we even see it. I'm doing work experience. It's deadly. Well, working up here is an experience, all right? Why are they called that, you ask? Well, it all stems from how the timeline looks when you're actually using the cut. So the J cut looks like a J, and the L cut looks like an L. I think I see it. The benefit of using this technique is you create a smooth, seamless transition between one clip or scene to the next without there being a abrupt change in the audio or dialogue. Awkward. It is awkward. The second transition is called the match cut. And as the name suggests, this transition is matching two different clips through the use of similar subject matter or action. In the context of video game trailer editing, I love using this transition because it allows me to show the viewer all the different environments and areas that your character can go through as quickly as possible. There are so many uses for this technique and the extent is really just your imagination. Imagination. Match cuts are very useful because they help maintain the viewer's attention on the subject of the video. When it comes to video game trailers, if the main character in the trailer is jumping from the top left to the top right, then the center, the viewer doesn't know where to look. It's very disruptive and ruins the flow of the video, which can cause frustration and could ultimately lead to the viewer exiting out of the video and not getting to watch any of it. The third and final transition for today is the use of full screen elements. This can be done in so many ways. And like I said before, the extent is really just your imagination. There's so much you can do, and I've seen people get incredibly creative with this. But for today, I'm only gonna be talking about a few of my favorites that I've used myself. You can use a quick zoom in to mimic the motion of entering into a new scene. You can use a lens flare, a paper dissolve, the use of graphics to mimic an eye blink in a first person game. You can even combine different techniques. In this particular example, we matched the scene but also used full screen elements within the game to hide the cut, creating this seamless transition and continuous shot. That's the great thing about post-production editing. You can combine whatever you want and create something that becomes yours and unique. 
Yeah, we got rules, we've got guidelines, but like I said, these are meant to be broken as long as you have intention and reasoning. All that matters is that the viewer gets the best possible experience when watching your video. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Originals Academy. If there are any other transition techniques that you wanna share with us or any other video techniques that you want us to discuss, feel free to drop in the comments below or send us an email. And as always, remember, with great video editing techniques comes great responsibility. <laughs> oh my God, why does anyone let me get in front of a camera? Here at Evolve, we do all sorts of things and we can do those things for your video games. www.evolve-pr.com